Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. This is Father Jonathan. I hope you're doing well. Today we'll continue our series, The Lives of the Saints. And on this day, the 26th of January, we celebrate the memory of the Venerable Paula of Rome. St. Paula was of Sion of one of the greatest families of Rome, was born in 347, and at the age of 16 married Toxotius, a rich and illustrious patrician who, although a pagan himself, gave her complete freedom to act as mistress of a Christian household. Five children were born to their union, St. Vasilia, Pauline, St. Eustochium, Rufinus, and Toxtias. Loaded thus with every worldly blessing at the age of 32, she was presented by God with a new path in life by the sudden death of her husband. After much weeping, she resolved to devote her entire life henceforth to the service of God and of the poor, following the example of St. Marcella, who had transformed her palace on the Aventine Hill into a monastery, a model of evangelic perfection in the midst of the corruption of the city. There, Paula formed a spiritual friendship with St. Jerome, who had come from the east with Paulinus of Antioch and St. Epiphanius of Cyprus. Paula offered hospitality to these two venerable representatives of the Eastern Church and listening avidly to their tales of the holy ascetics of Egypt and Palestine, she resolved to leave Rome, her family, and her possessions in order to live in the desert. The love of her children held her back for a time, and it was the sudden death of Vlesia that made her decide to leave without a backward glance. Embarking with Eustochium and a company of virgins, she went by way of Cyprus and Antioch and met St. Jerome again, who was her guide for the rest of her pilgrimage in Syria and Palestine. On arriving at Jerusalem, she declined to live in the style arranged for her by the proconsul of Palestine, but took a modest house and spent her time visiting the holy places with tears of compunction. She went all over the Holy Land and visited the monks of the Egyptian deserts and returned to Bethlehem at the end of a year with the plan of founding two religious houses near the cave of the Nativity, a convent for virgins and for the widows accompanying them, and the monastery for St. Jerome and his friends. Inspired by St. Melania's foundation on the Mount of Olives and by what she had learned from the monasteries of St. Pacomius in Egypt, Paula organized the women's community in three groups, each with its own superior, according to the social origin and education level of the sisters. The nuns worked and ate with their own group, but the whole community met as one for common prayer. Every day they chanted the whole Psalter with the sisters, had, which the sisters had to know by hearts, and each one had, in addition to learn and mediate upon, meditate on some of the other passages of Scripture during the day. Paula herself learned Hebrew and, guided by St. Jerome, strove to interpret the most obscure passages of the Holy Scripture in a spiritual sense. So imbued was she with the Word of God that in all circumstances and bereavements and illnesses, reverses or enjoys, she could find the apt text and make it a part of the constant prayer in which she raised her soul to God. For her spiritual daughter, she was the living image of the virtues, assiduous in prayer, eager in work, austere in fasting. She was lavish only in almsgiving and in love for the poor, desirous herself of acquiring poverty of spirit and of giving back to God what he had given her by way of earthly goods. She distributed them freely to all the poor who came her way. She even gave away what the community needed for its subsistence and got heavily into debt, notwithstanding the remonstrations remonstrances and appeals of reason of Jerome, she could not bear to send anyone away hungry or in rags. When she was blamed for excessively mortifying her flesh, she replied, I used to take so much care to please my husband and the world by putting on powder on my face, and now I want to be able to please Christ by afflicting my body that it was so that was so pampered in spite of her high virtues and love for everyone saint paula was cal calumniated by the partisans 
of origin who hated her and for her friendship with the, their enemy, St. Jerome. She had great pa greater patience than that of the hot-tempered Jerome, who she exhorted to emulate the meekness and magnanimity of our Savior when he faced his enemies. Sometimes later, she and her spiritual daughters were on the point of fleeing from Bethlehem, threatened by an invasion of the Huns, when they heard that the barbarians had been forced by God to retreat. Her maternal heart was cruelly afflicted by the successive loss of, of Pauline and Toxitis, and when she was subjected in her later years to the final test of the daily martyrdom of illness. With her gentle daughter, Epstochium, always at her side, she bore the pain with wonderful patience and self-denial. With scarcely enough warmth in her body to retain her soul, she constantly murmured the verses, Lord, I have loved the beauty of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. All my soul hath desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. After she had spoken the words of comfort to her daughters and to the bishops, monks, and priests who had assembled from all over Palestine to be near her, a sudden brightness lit up her face. She stretched forward to hear Christ say to her, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away, for lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. Song of Songs 2, 10 through 11. And she replied to him with joy, The time of harvest has come. I shall truly see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. And so she gave up her soul at the age of 56 on the 26th of January, 404. Her funeral was a triumph attended by scores of monks from all parts and by poor folk who wept for the one whom they looked on as their mother and their, and their providence. Through the prayers of St. Paulina of Rome, may the Lord God have mercy on us and save us. God bless you. We're here for you. We love you dearly. Don't hesitate to reach out. Call us, email us, leave us a note on social media, leave us a note in the comment section. If you'd like to support this ministry, remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Again, God bless you and have a beautiful rest of your day.